Hey there folks, Dreyth here. I've made some modifications to my microphone, so I thought I'd test it out and show off one of my more, uh, unconventional designs in KSP. This is what I've taken to calling a jocket, or jet rocket. Unlike a space plane, you don't have to worry about lift. It flies more or less just like a rocket in that it's, uh, lift just comes from how much thrust it has. We have to let the engines heat all the way up, but once they are, we let it go, and it flies straight up. It doesn't quite operate like a rocket, in that once we get up high enough, we're going to have to treat it a little bit differently. But for all extents and purposes, this is a very efficient way of getting into orbit. Jet engines cost about the same as rocket engines, but they use a lot less fuel and their fuel tanks are dirt cheap. So, just until we're at 10k or so, we're just gonna go straight up. Once we get to 10k, we're just gonna watch it from map mode. And unlike a rocket where you turn at 45 degrees, we are going to try and keep this as flat as possible and try and keep our apoapsis about 20 seconds ahead of us. That'll allow us to pick up a whole lot of lateral velocity until we're very nearly at an orbital velocity. And that'll make it very, very easy for the little nuclear engines on the next stage to take us all the rest of the way into orbit. So, it's about time to start our turn. And we're just going to keep one hairy eyeball on our apoapsis. Make sure that it's always rising at about the same rate we are. Right now we need to flatten out more. Oh. Now we're flattened out a bit too much, but we're going to hold here anyway because we're going to pick up speed really, really fast. And as we do, our apoapsis is going to start rising again. And pretty soon here, I think it's already happened. Yep, our apoapsis is starting to climb again. So we're going to let that get to about 20. And then we're going to flatten out some more. and we need to keep an eye on our intake air. We have six engines, so when it drops below 0.6, we need to start throttling down. A little bit more flat. A little bit more. The prograde marker is a fairly good guesstimate of where we want to be. But it's not always precise. And we're getting awfully, awfully close to our cutoff point where we need to start slowing down. One, start slowing here. And let's pull our nose up a little bit to make up for that. Get our apo rising again. At this stage, we want our apoapsis to start rising up way ahead of us. We want it to be at least 30k. And the faster we're going, the better. This is by far the most stressful part of this whole operation. Because this little part is what's going to determine whether we're going to space today or not. There it is at 3k, let's see how long we can hold it. And just keep ourselves going faster and higher. Yep, and I think that's our cutoff point. So, engines off. 
little bit of lag in the decoupling stage. Now, I have changed my focus over to those jets, and they have some parachutes on them. And those jet engines will, in fact, land safely on their own. And, uh, yep, <laughs> our apoapsis is rising faster than we are, so we are going to space today! Hooray! But those jets are on a successful return because we're heading away from them and they don't have a probe core or anything on them. They'll just be culled by the engines, but I like to think that they're landing in the ocean safely and uh, KSC is going to send out a little tugboat and drag them home and reuse them. In fact, count if you count those jet engines, this mission is one of the few I've designed with a 100% return parts rate. Alright, our apoapsis is above the atmosphere, so now what we do is we flatten out, and we reduce our thrust until we're just maintaining altitude. There we go. That's about right. And we just hold there until we're at apoapsis. Alright, now we are at apoapsis, so we can just more or less burn straight prograde. And I started that burn a little bit late, but oh well. At this point, we are so near orbital velocity that we just need a tiny, tiny little push, and we'll be right there. Let's pull our nose up a little bit, see if we can get our apoapsis back ahead of us. There we go. Just chase our apo. Let's see if I can get this in almost exactly 80k orbit, just for the lulls. Eccentricity is usually about where I would leave it, but because this is for the uh, for posterity, let's be extra fancy. Eighty. Oh, <laughs> forty meters eccentricity. That's about as circular as an orbit can get. Oops, a bit late, but oh well. See, once we're in orbit, this is pretty much a conventional mission. What's really innovative about it is the, uh, launching stage. But might as well show the whole mission anyway. So jockets, I think, are a pretty interesting thing to start designing and playing with. Maybe they need a less stupid name. Eh, maybe not. Okay, that's good. Well, that's weird. But, that's life. As you can see, there's a uh, unfortunate failed mission left over there. I I should get around to deleting it, but I kind of don't have the heart, and it's not really in the way. It's the one piece of space debris. My orbit isn't quite centered, so I'm just going to try and see if I can push my prograde on the dot. Or retrograde, rather. <laughs> there, that looks straight. It isn't quite, but a couple of degrees ain't gonna kill me. Wait, what am I doing? I want my orbit lower than this. I want an orbit of about 30k. So thrust away. There. Now we just recircularize. 
Yeah, it's a bit tilted, but a bit tilt is okay. That just means that we get a little bit of extra uh, practice at rendezvousing. <laughs> it's a very Bob Ross thing of me to say. There are no accidents in Kerbal Space Program, just happy little expenditures of our Delta V budget. It's a sojourn. Maybe it'll end in the crust of the moon. Maybe it'll end back at the planet. Either way, it's an adventure. Okay, 29.9, nine, 30.07. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's get back around to the sun side. Oh, that's interesting. We're in a 270 degree orbit rather than a 90 orbit. Okay, let's get ourselves pointed at zero degrees so that this thing will be easier to dock with, because this is an Apollo-style mission. How much fuel do we have? Well, we have enough to get home, sure. The trick is going to be <laughs> managing to get back to this thing. But... If it weren't risky, it wouldn't be space. Nah, camera. I wish the camera would stop doing that. I think that camera has killed me more times than my own incompetence. And that's saying something. Where do we want to land? Let's see if we can land in that nice crater there. No, that's way too early. Let's and land in that nice crater there. <laughs> Wait, can Fraff see my mouse? Did I enable mouse, sight, whatever? Uh, well. We're, we're landing in a crater. Hopefully. Now, our goal in this landing is to spend a bit less than half of our fuel. And that'll be a little bit difficult, but it should be manageable. Maybe I should cut here, but burns are exciting. They're sexy. Sexy engine burn. Let's just flatten out our lateral. Get ourselves. Always remember that you are ramming away your retrograde. So by thrusting here, I'm kind of pushing it towards the crown. And the farther away from it, the stronger my I'm thrusting it, or rather, the uh, the more of my thrust is going into pushing it, rather than going against my vertical velocity. And it's about time that we started killing that vertical velocity, because it would be a pity to land perfectly straight down into the ground at 100 meters per second. budget, but if we get lucky with our rendezvous, that should hopefully not to matter too much. Okay, let's call it right about there. Okay, so we want to go this way. Come on, come on. Oh. Wait, we've got another intercept, and I can get it real close. Wait, what? Oh, come on. There we are. And let's just get there. Okay, now let's...
let's start pulling our pro grenade onto the target and come on, come on little thing, there we go. Now let's get going at a good, I'd say, 60 meters per second. Oops, too fast. Now, well, that just gives us a little extra correction. Now, what does our intercept look like? Oh, we're already close. If I just let us drift, we would hit the damn thing. Which is what we want. Okay, now I may have to, in fact, cut a little because I take forever to line up a docking properly in most cases. <laughs> hey there, folks. Sorry about that there. That took an in ordinate amount of time, and it's still not docking. Why is it still not docking? Ah, there we go! <laughs> finally! Finally! That took like half an hour! Oh god. Oh good lord. Okay. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's just kindly forget that ever happened. I definitely need to put a probe core on the nuclear stage so that it can reorient itself, because <laughs> what I did in the cut there is I accidentally rammed into it, and I got it spinning. And I had to position myself so that um, as it spanned past, I could get the docking clamps lined up and just kind of ram into it and bit by bit get it to slow down again. And that was awful. Awful, awful. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, eh, what am I doing? I know that's the right place to thrust. I'll just eyeball it when I get there. And let's just turn the marker off altogether, forget about it, and go. Oh yeah, we've got scads of fuel. We're getting home, no problem. Let's get our parry down to about there. Alright, we are entering the atmosphere. Which means that we have successfully made our way home. All the remaining fuel will just be used to soften our landing, and we are coming in fast. My goodness, are we coming in fast. I don't know if I want to really physically accelerate this, because it is a docked craft. Oh... This is making up for all the pyrotechnics we missed on the way up. This is probably burning a bit too hot for comfort, in fact. It's those extended legs. <laughs> Losing my voice a little bit. Kind of just got over a cold. I should have put the parachutes all one stage higher so that I could deploy them after the fire is gone. Oh well, it's not like heat is implemented in the game for this yet. <laughs> but in future builds, yes, we'll have to note that. 
save parachutes for after they would burn up. Looks a bit like a big virus infecting the earth with returning heroes. other than being at night and being over the ocean. Water landings tend to be a bit less uh, elegant. These lands are meant for land leg. Yeah. Look at that! It's intact! Oh boy! Well, <laughs> other than the Apollo docking, that went about as well as can be expected. So yeah, that is a lovely little experimental craft I've built. I hope you've enjoyed this video, everyone. It was... <laughs> And experience making it. Oh, look at that. 3.6G. This was a feathery smooth operation. Well, I hope that was enlightening for you. I will talk to you all later.